Hello, everyone. We are now recording for episode 164 of Enter the Dungeon. Andreas wants to give a recap as to what happened last time. I I don't. Okay. I, broke, we, I think we you're the only one the other city. than our, our wonderful DM who can do that. No, I can't. I, I most certainly cannot. Okay, Andreas. Birds. Hmm? Osprey. Gordon's who, Quest. Who, who are you guys? I, I don't know you. It's been too long. Cheese. Andres, you made cheese out of milk. Oh, so I did. Okay, good. That you remember. I, 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 I did milk like out of, of, of on it. toenails. To be honest, I don't remember what happened. Gordon cooked something, and we helped. That yes. is... <laughs> I mean, Wait, I, I, I helped? Why, why don't I remember this? Well, you weren't there. Oh. This makes sense. My... You know, we, my, we uh, did use your stone, though. Don't worry. No, I don't think you guys are abusing it. Earthmover just realized. Would, that... Don't I have? Isn't my stone used for the undead? Yeah, we are making cheese. How are you using a stone for the undead with cheese making? Well, I mean, undead kind of gives you connotations of like rot and decay, yes, and then it's like, undead. oh, rot and decay is often caused by bacteria. What's in cheese? Bacteria. Bing bong. No, Andres, remember, you didn't end up needing to use the gem. You were just able to, you know, um, transmute the acids. Yeah, I was like, hey, let me just speed up. Yeah, but we did use your uh, gem the session before that to talk to a dead guy. It was for uh, legal reasons. Why Why are you talking to dead guys without me? I you weren't the there. Because the problems with the dead people. Well, hey, that's, hey, that's, hey. That's, why, that's why we did it while you weren't there. We didn't cause any problems. Yeah, and think I want to cause problems. Yeah. And also, you know, it was... Oh, a wait, place. okay. By by the way, do we still have that high elf with us? Whatever happened to him? Okay, yes. That is actually something that we need to take care we of right sold now. for parts. Uh, no, you haven't done that yet. So, Ash, uh, we'll say that, um, you know, this is right after the trial concluded, and this is why you weren't helping with the cook-off. You were just like, oh, man, I, 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 I've got an elf in my trunk. I need to get to that before he spoils. Wait, he's, is, is he dead yet? Nope, not dead. Good. Gotta good, wake good, up good. any moment, though, as far as you know. Uh, okay, that's fine by me. Uh, I'm going... So I, I've been taking him to uh, to the guy who can give me... Who can uh, use him to give me new, new power-ups, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yes, you're able to sneak that body out. So, so how do you sneak this body out? Do you do it weekend at Bernie style or just pick up the bag or what? Uh, you, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna casually I'm just gonna casually uh drag him drag him along behind me. Okay. And I'm gonna try and be sneaky about it yet. If you're just dragging a body, yeah, at a certain point someone stops you and says, uh, sir, is your friend okay? He's out. Help, help! My friend is no, dying. He's... Sir, he's... I think he's, he's okay. already dead. No 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 don't don't, don't worry about it, he's fine. Oh he did he... And the guard kind of pokes him. Oh, did he have too much to, you know, glug glug? Uh, just a little bit, yeah. Oh, yes. You know those elf types always imbuing their wine. No offense. Are we in a prohibition that... state? What's with the guard being He's... like, oh, I'm going to be not very cavalier about saying the word drinking? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, you know, these high elves, they, they say they can drink, but no one can. No one can outdrink. No elf can outdrink a drow. Okay, so are drows part dwarf then? We, I mean, they can outdrink us, but not many others can. <laughs> okay, we 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 regularly have parties with them, both being underground. You you know how it goes. Yep. Well, perhaps that's why we were able to beat them with the warforged. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, at least someone understands the order of things. All right, then. Have a have a good rest of your day. Make sure your friend doesn't get into any more trouble. Oh, he won't. Uh, also, Andres, to answer your question, no, this guy's just racist. <laughs> good. I mean, he's racist, uh, just like me. Ah, uh, yes. The clat art. I, as long as he's a good racist, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, you know, he, he got the gold medal at the 50-mile uh, sprint, or the pit meter. 
At least, as long as he's racist against the correct races, we're good. Exactly. Look, I mean, as if long as he doesn't discriminate against the elves, that's a problem. But if he's just racist against high elves, yeah. we're good. Also, I, I want to remind you guys that there's like lore and setting reasons why this guy's a racist. I didn't just randomly decide to make some random guard hate elves. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He just hates elves. I mean, I hate <laughs> elves. Not Earthmover, Andreas. <laughs> So you're saying I should make more elf sub races, Andreas? No, I'll be. I'll, I mean, Andreas would just be racist to them. Okay, but anyway, yes. As a reminder, because it's been like six weeks since we last played, you guys are in a very militaristic, borderline fascistic country that's not very friendly to outsiders. Aren't they also <laughs> like three feet tall? Yeah, they're gnomes. Cool. I don't understand. We, we, can, how... we can eat them if we need to. Yeah, that can be easy. We can yeah. do it. I don't think they're going to be racist to me, or at least they would have good reason not to. Yeah. Because if they're racist to me and we're on a floating island and I'm much larger than them, there is probably nothing in their minds stopping the thought of he could just throw me off right now. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway. I could, and I would. So anyway, hey, Ash, Kitty. you're able to, you know, take the body just down the road to the surgeon's house, or office, rather. He probably doesn't live here. You're right, though. And he opens up the door for you and says, Ah, I see you brought what we discussed. Come on in. Yes, yes. And he, and he locks the door behind the two of you. So I'm going to need to examine the specimen. Hmm. Hmm. Relatively good condition. Although, why does he look like he's just been dragged down a half a mile of road? Don't worry about it. As long as he's, as long as we can perform the necessary actions with him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, uh, all right then. So. So, let's see now. We discussed 500 gold pieces. I, I'm, I'm just I'm struggling to remember. So, is 500 gold pieces what I pay him or what he pays me? Oh, he is going to uh, buy the body off of you for 500 gold pieces. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I was just trying to remember. Yes, five. And will you be able to use him to help out some of my abilities. Well, what is it that you need? I don't know. What can a high elf give me? Hmm. I mean, you already probably have superior eyes for seeing underground. But... There is one downside to them. While I can see quite well, the sunlight is... A problem. Hmm. All right then. Consider it a special. Consider it a special thanks for bringing him in such good condition. I can replace your eyes for his. Will I maintain my incredible darkness vision? No, it will be reduced, but still very impressive. Hmm. How reduced would it be? Hmm. Um, but basically, would I go from superior dark vision to just a regular dark vision, or would it be some sort of hybrid? Uh, yes, he would be replacing both of your eyes, so you would go from the drow version to the normal people version. Mm. So that's only out to 60 feet instead of 120. What else can you do for me? What else? Hmm. I mean, do you want his ears? It's just, your physiologies are already so similar that while there are certain things I could give you if you wanted them, they wouldn't increase your overall power. But for instance, if you were to give me a human, then I could, oh, give him some elven traits, expand his longevity, some magical understanding, everything like that. Increase his senses. Could you... Hmm. Hmm. 
Uh, I'm 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 just trying to think about what like what what my spell casting is through. What is my spell casting through? Is it with my mm -hmm. charisma? Yes. Could you, you could you make me more charismatic with him? With mm. his parts. Probably not with his organs per se, but hmm. Let's see now. So, hmm. probably are things we could give you, but not from a not from a high elf per se. Hmm. Let's see now. But there are ways that you could train for that, or perhaps, I mean. Hmm. If you had some sort of magic that we could have surgically implanted inside of you, but... Hmm. But I suppose, you know, one day there could be research into, oh, the parts of the body that generate things like understanding and social cue, and we could perhaps one day be able to transplant those from one person into another, but you would need someone who's very charismatic to make that transfer. So, for instance, if you knew someone who's very charming, perhaps we could take out your heart and put his heart inside there. Mm. Metaphorically, we, after multiple experiments, we found that the heart itself has minimal effect on human charisma. Unfortunate. Well, I guess I'll take his ears then. Those will give me superior hearing, correct? Hmm. Um... Yeah, after, it's just that it's because you're already an elf. You pretty much have all of the cool elf features. I want to make my elf features even stronger. I mean, I, I guess you could attach extra ears onto your ears. That might be something, but... There's nothing that can make me better? I mean, it, it, there might be some things you could do. Like, do you want him to give you extra ears? <laughs> extra ears? No, not extra ears. Can can he make my muscles bigger? Oh, with um, with the elvis muscles. Yeah, he could basically take the existing muscles and then put them into yours. Uh, that's going to be a bit more involved though, and a bit more expensive. But would yes. that but that would increase my strength though? Correct. Yes, it would. Mm. And as we all know, all drow share the same one blood type with all high elves, so it's not a problem. What I mean, did this? Become it's, it's not that, that, that we all share the same blood type. It's mm -hmm. that we, it's that myself and this high elf just happen to share the same blood type. Yeah, or it's there's multiple ways to, you know, force the organs to match blood types. Exactly. Okay. So while, yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So while the two of them are haggling, what did the other two of you do? Uh, I do want to know where I'm at. You are in the city of Rose Sword. Um, let's see now. In the country of Panip, you just finished up a famous cook-off with your associate, Gordon Filet, and you were told that within the next um, day or two, uh, the flying machine will be ready to take you up to Cloudforge. Okay, so we're just waiting. And also, it's do you guys want to do anything before you leave? Like, um, oh, Earthmover, do you want to get some silver and lead? What? Why? It's not as if I'm making some kind of mystical uh, magic item called a portable basement or anything that <laughs> I would want that for. Uh, Andre, do you actually have perfect memory of the campaign, but you act like you don't to mess with me? No. If, if I could have a perfect memory of the campaign, I would also have perfect memory of lots of other things that I don't. No, it's very specific, just for Enter the Dungeon. No. Nothing about my ability to have memory is, is specific. Mm. Okay, but yeah, do you want to inquire about your um, medals? Uh, sure. Okay, yeah, so you can probably go... Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, you're a powerful enough alchemist that you could just forge this into a box yourself. You don't necessarily need someone to smelt it for you. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, now we get back to our favorite subject. How much does a specific quantity of a substance cost? Okay, there we go. So you need 975 cubic inches of metal for the box. And okay, yes. What, we okay, what, what, what type of metal are we talking about here? Uh, lead and silver, but we figured it out. Okay, so last year, April 30th to, oh no, that's actually just earlier this year, April. No, wait, what year is it? 2024? Yeah. It is 2024, yes. Yeah, sorry, it's tripping me up because of how close it is to the date, almost exactly a year ago, a year and a few weeks. So uh, basically, it's going to cost you 550 gold to get the silver and lead you need. How much? 550 gold. There's not a rat's chance in my ass that I have that much gold. Now, if only one of you just received 500 gold pieces... Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame that I'm not with you right now. Well, I mean, you guys Honestly, could... I, I, I might even be able to talk him down, maybe. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, Rayford, it's probably explained to you the um, potential complications of such a muscle-building surgery, so you're probably given some time to think it over. I will just... I'll take the 500 gold. Yes. So he does pay you out and just says, well, and remember, though, I will give you a solid discount if you ever want transplants again. You've done well by me. Now, I have one request of you. Yes. With, with his elf. Mm -hmm. Don't let him out ever again. Um, I, I don't think you understand how this works. I don't want him to live. After this. I mean, it depends on what you mean by live. I mean, every part of him is still going to be alive, but in the next five hours, he's going to be a series of separate pieces in preservation models. That works for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, philosophically, do you consider that alive? He's not going to be walking what up as a be alive. Yes. What is alive? Yeah, I mean, especially for Westman, he's mechanical, so you could replace parts on him. Oh, yeah. I mean, actually, we, we, hold we, on. We can shift. Is there we a shift right Thiessel? Thiessel? Because that, uh, I want to check out my memory chip. We, uh, we, we can ship of Theseus him. Yes, yeah, so that's going to end up being up on Cloudforge, but if you want, um, Rafe, uh, so Westman can walk around and try to get some information on the uh, Warforged. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, and so, but Rayford, so, so yeah, you're going to... I've got the 500 gold, and now I'm just going to be uh, just wandering around now. It's gonna be a good time. Okay. I mean, do you seek out your uh, party members? Um, are there any? Hmm. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I would probably like to see some spells. Are there any places where I can buy spells that I could inscribe into my into my uh, book? So you want to find like a like a like a wizard store for scrolls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see now. Well, I know Andreas can make spell scrolls, so he could actually make some for you that you then copy down. That could be something. I have to know the spell to be able to make the spell scroll of that scroll. Yes. That's the only... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go see if there's any spell scroll that I can purchase. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to the... Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and I have a uh, Book of Ancient Secrets as one of my invocations. Right, that's what I was trying to find. Ancient Secrets. Yes, yeah, so you can basically copy any ritual spell. Yep. So, Andreas, the first question would be, does Earthmover know any ritual spells? I think he knows Detect Magic, right? Well, I'm an artificer, so I prepare spells. Well, yes, but for the sake of making a scroll, right? You know it? No. 
Well, uh, you ask an excellent question. The issue I'm having right now is I don't have my spell list, but I have up to third level spells, so presumably yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes, I do. It's right there. I have it prepared. Okay. I can also do um, identify. Mm -hmm. Let's see now. I can only do up to third level spells. Yes. Um. As well as the, yeah, so the spell has to be prepared slash known. Well, detect magic is prepared. Okay, so yes, in that case, if um, yeah, if the two of you want to meet up at some point, because it probably does recur to um, Rayford, hey, I'm traveling around with powerful magical people. I should at least check to see what spells they know. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like I I would also like to still go to this. I, I actually, I'll still be able to go to the spell shop later, right? Yes, probably as long as you don't get run out of town. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, in that case, yeah, I'm just going to go go meet up with the rest of the party then. Yes, yeah, so the two of you are able to meet up after a little while, so Earthmover trying to figure out where he's going to get money from, and Rayford trying to figure out what he's going to do with his money. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my money, because I don't... Doesn't even, oh my god. Okay, yeah. 500 gold pieces is what I got? Yes. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Actually, do, do I get them all as gold pieces, or like, do I get some other pieces? Actually, it's it's 10 gold piece to a pl uh, for one platinum, right? Uh, Yeah, 10 to a platinum. So am I getting it all in gold, or am I getting some platinum as well? Um, I, it's, it's the equivalent of 500 gold. Yeah, so For 500 gold, that's a lot of gold to be carrying around. It will probably get like an assortment between platinum, gold, and treasury notes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the majority of it is actually treasury notes. But I have the equivalent of 500 gold on me. Yes. Well, yeah. from that. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, uh, Chris, how much gold does Westfin have? Let me check. I don't honestly don't remember. Um, I know most of my gold went to the other character, but let me double check again because I don't I don't really go around getting gold. Yep. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're we're gonna we're going to the uh, what you call it, so. Earth mover needs the gold for what? For a magic box. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he's probably, I mean, Earth, is there any reason Earth mover would not have told Rayford about the portable basement? Probably not. So basically, they found schematics a while back for a magic box that has a um, demi plane on the inside that's 30 feet by 30 feet by 30 feet. So if they can get that activated, then that's a pretty powerful um, storage apparatus. And then, and we can just take that with us wherever we want? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Nice. Oh, actually, while I'm here, while I'm with these guys, uh, I am going to also... I'm I'm gonna a ask the rest of the party members uh, to write their names in my grimoire. That feels like a trap, but okay. I don't know. It's it's so that I so that I can uh, communicate with them. Okay, Earth Mover, do you write your name in his grimoire? I, I, I. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of don't want to. 
<laughs> yeah, never mind the fact that I'm having you write this underneath this agreement for a soul. Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna need some more information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I'm, I'm working on getting. I'm working on getting. I just gotta look it up real quick. Raw Earth Movers knows this is a death note. Like I don't. Here, just write your own name and think of yourself. Right. Make sure you know who you are as you write your true. If you have any aliases, don't use those. Use your real name. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone really know who they are? No, oh, no, there's a good question. Yeah, like if Westman were to try to write the name Westman, would that count? I mean, he thinks of himself as Westman, but at the same time, he knows that that's not his um, original name. If if you allow, if you would write your name in my in my book, we, we can try and find out without that is your name. Over, over long distances, without needing to be with each other. Basically, if, if I have it, I'll be able to cast sending with. I'll, I'll be able to communicate with you by casting sending. Tld, that's what's going to happen. Also, Drew, I can't find the gold. How much gold I have on my person? Mm. And based on my character, I don't because I don't need to eat. I don't need to do anything. Uh, I don't think my character would have carried gold. Mm -hmm. if, if I had gold, it'd be very minimal. Okay. We'll, we'll be able to communicate with, in our minds. Yeah. Is, th is this something Earth Mover is interested in, or no? Sorry, say again? If you write your name in my book, I'll be able to communicate over long distances in our minds. Short messages, but messages nonetheless. Can I write it on a page that isn't suspiciously close to a soul deal? Sure, we can put it at the back of the book. <laughs> that almost feels worse, but okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, now, okay, cool. Uh, now, now that book, now that it's written in there, I'm just going to uh, try and send a message to uh, to Earth Mover. Uh, okay, what? Test what? Ba what ba testing? Basically, just can, can you testing, 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 testing? Can you hear me? Yep. What effect is this? Huh? What effect is this? Uh, so I'm doing. So I have the Elvish invocation, Starstride. Yes. Okay. Which means I can cast the sending spell. Without using a spell slot and without using material components. Okay. I just have to write it on the page. Huh. Yeah, there's no per day limit as to the number of times you can cast that. Yep. Interesting. And then, and then it just appears on my uh, on, on my grimoire. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing I don't quite understand: is is this just going to be like a running chat log that I keep now? Because it looks like I. Oh no, the writing disappears after one minute. Okay. So yeah. So, uh, is there anything else? Get? So, uh, anything else you guys want to do in town before we fast forward to um, the flying to um, Cloud Forge? Like, is what? Rayford going to bankroll Earthmover? Um, because that's not just. Going, do, do we? I, I can 
It's, it's going to become a party item. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I can try and talk him down so it's not quite as expensive. Sure. I, I think I have the highest charisma out of all of us. That sounds right. Earth Mover yeah. doesn't have high charisma at all. So. Which is strange, because I am also very creepy. Gerald is 18, so... I have the second highest charisma. Yeah. I have five. But Gerald's not here. I think I have the lowest charisma here. Yeah. I have very high charisma, even though I'm also very creepy. Which is very surprising because of the fact that... Am I also... Do I have a background of folk hero? Give me a second. Yes. My, my dumb set is sanity. So I guess I the only reason why I'm a folk hero is because of the fact that I did stuff. For yeah. other people. <laughs> and even then, my sanity is eight, surprisingly enough. Yeah, Chris, you're one of the few heroes that actually had to earn the title. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm smart and charismatic and wise. Mm-hmm. No, not wise. Uh, high hunts. High constitution. Yeah, so with uh, so Ash, with you, the way I see your charisma is that you're really good at reading people and as such, you know what they want to hear so you're able to tell them that and also, you're really good at lying to people and freaking them out so you're really good at, you know, working people's emotions, but it's not that typical suave charisma, like um, you know, like a princely aura about you. It's, it, it's more like I know how to manipulate people. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. And which also works into my high intelligence. Yep. And so does Westman want to help them collect their uh, metal? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to see if I can um, t- talk him down. Yeah. T- talk him down from 500? Yeah, so uh, do the three of you go to the local metallurgic shop? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Now. Yeah, so this is a... Um, it's a it's a bit of a fascinating place, you know. It's got um large smokestacks and um, also gears that are just moving, uh, you know, being powered by the forges. And the person that comes out to meet you, they um you know they are a gnome, of course, but they've got like this um yeah they've so, and they have their hair cut short, probably so that it stays out of the fire. But you know they're wearing all sorts of um, metal rings and everything like that, and a thick leather um, apron. Okay. Ah, hello there. Hello. I hear that you are my my friends here. They they're looking to buy some metal off you. Mm-hmm. Well, you came to the right place. My name's Emil. How oh, wonderful, Emil. I am Rayford. <laughs> now this. How, how much metal were we looking to buy again? That's a question for the DM. Andreas does not remember that number. Like 195 like inches what? or something. Uh, let's see. 935, I think you said? 975 we, square inches? Looks like it was 100. Looks like I let you round down, so it was 100 pounds of silver and then 250 pounds of lead. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, we were looking to buy 100 yeah. pounds of silver and 250 pounds of lead. Mm. Yep, I mean, I have that in stock, but that's going to be pretty pricey. Yes, how how much are we talking here? Well, let's see now. Um, rounding down, and this is probably the best price that you'll get for 100 miles, 550 gold pieces. That is, that is a lot of gold. Why, why, did, why is it so expensive? I mean, you need a lot of it. Do 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 you have any respect, any much perspective on how much you're getting here? I mean, th- this is like ten people's worth of metal. Mm. It is a lot of metal, yes, but. I'm sure that we could come to some sort of agreement. Yeah. And then he looks at Earth over and says there are maybe like one and a half people. So I don't know. It depends on your scale. Well, what's is is the problem? Is is it so much because you have to is it already here? Do you need to go get it? What's going on here? 
Well, I do have some. I probably do have just enough in the back, but you'll really be clearing me out. Mm. So you would need to go and get more, then, is what I'm hearing. Eventually, yes. I would have to order some to, for my next orders. Well, what if and we went plus, to go get them all ourselves? Also, you know, it's um, I am legally required to ask a couple questions. So what do you need Oops. this metal for? Uh, magic item. Interesting. What what type are you attempting to build a weapon? I mean, anything in the wrong hands is a weapon, but its primary uh, purpose is not a weapon. It's a storage device. Okay, because you know, um, as you can imagine, we're very particular about who we allow to craft magical weapons here. What in a hyper militaristic town? No. Yeah. This this wouldn't be used as a weapon. This, this would be used as a storage device. Yeah, if, I, if, to... I was, if I was going to use something that had this technology in it as a weapon, I'd use something that was a little bit cheaper. Okay. So what kind of storage device? Same basic principle as like a portable bag of... Sorry. Portable hole or bag of holding. Interesting. And you already know how you would make it? Yep. Yeah, I've got blueprints for it. All right. I'll give you a deal. I will give you a discount on this metal, but you need to tell me how you're going to make the box. I want all the details and processes. What's the discount? Hmm. I guess it depends on how complete your uh, methodology is. I mean, if you're still at the hit it with magic and see what it can hold stage, well, not very much. I'm at the if you handed this to a craftsman, they could make it stage. Okay. So, But let me ask you this, though. So you've got the silver, and you've got the lead. Okay, so you've got a box at that point. What makes the magic box? <laughs> uh, actually, now I have to ask an over-the-table question. Were we infusing one of the uh, planar gems into this, or just using a planar gem to make it? Uh, from your understanding, it will require you... This will become a planar gem artifact, like how you have the hammer or um, Gerald has his staff, or Gordon has his ring. This will right. be the, a, a planar gem object. Well, uh, it requires a pretty stout power supply. Mm -hmm. How much are we talking here? Uh, how about you just list some things off, and I'll tell you when you get to a high enough power output. Hmm. Okay, an industrial forge. I'm I'm looking around the shop. Is there one present? I mean, yeah. I mean, he. It, it, you can tell that like the outer portions is definitely like an aesthetic, but you see the telltale signs of a forge. Not enough. Okay. Hmm. What about high yield explosives? Well, you need something that's endurance that can output power continuously. So, unless you're really prepared to uh, to think about just continually feeding explosives into something, I'm going to say no. Okay. Uh, so we're 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 just getting one of the planar gems, right? Mm -hmm. To power this. Yes. Yeah. Why Why don't we just plug the planar gem so he can see what our power source? Because is? Because I want him to feel silly. <laughs> A dragon. I, I think that's going to make him feel pretty silly if we just pull out an object which is one of the fundamental powers of the universe. Yeah. I feel like that's going to make, make him feel pretty silly. You can use high-yield explosives to kill a dragon. I'm thinking the, power, the fire power just went down with that guess. I guess it depends on the dragon and how much explosives you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking nuke, yeah, it's like, a nuke is going to take out a dragon pretty This easy. world doesn't have nukes yet. The equivalent of a nuke. It could have which black I, holes I, I, if they understood that. Have, but, does you know. this world have the... Have the magical equivalent of a nuke yet? Or has that not been created? I mean, yeah, there are... Well, there are extreme weapons of mass destruction. There's but... ninth level spells in this world, sure. Yeah, yeah, but those aren't quite nukes. Like, beca There's because the... a nuke... Uh, a nuke is something you can... You can make... You, you can make and you can replicate. A, ma a ninth level spell, I mean... You can make a, a spell scroll. Yeah, there's yeah, the... But... There's the scroll... Yeah, of the I want to make a wand of meteor swarm. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. 
But and only, hand if, it's a only if I get to make uh, one that can summon an undead army. The, the, you mean the wand of Orcus? Sure. The okay. Wand of simultaneous summon undead. So are exactly. we talking about like a high level magic item in and of itself? Yes. Interesting. Well, hmm. And you already have the plans to make one? The oh no, I have the power source already. Okay, but yes, yeah, have... he's talking on the blueprints. But you have the blueprints for the box. Yeah. Just to clarify, they are fully fleshed out. Yes. Um. Yes, well enough. Like I just gave you like a cover page, but there was a bit more detail in them. Yeah. Um, including some information, like they estimate that once the box is powered, it's going to also be lighter, so that way you're not carrying hundreds of pounds of metal with you. Right. Like, light enough for any of us to pick up, or... Uh, the dwarves were unsure about that part. Like, one thing that you can also clearly tell from their notes is that they weren't able to make this. They, they also didn't, didn't have a power source. Oh, they did, though. Well, not these dwarves, question mark. Yeah. Wow, Andres, not all dwarves know each other. Well, that's not what I meant. The dwarves, as a culture, did in fact have one. Yeah. These dwarfs, as a subset of that culture and as a closed off group of people, did not. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. All right. So, all right. And. Interesting. And where'd you even get this? Did you make these plans yourself? No, but I don't remember where we picked these up. I mean, I pr presumably you you may not as the player remember, but your character yeah. would remember. No, I know my character would. That's yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't have a camera on because I'm not wearing a shirt. I turned to to the the call. So, Sorry. uh, you found them in a campsite near where you fought the trolls. Presumably, the trolls ate these worms. Oh. Uh... Andreas, put a shirt on. No. Uh, we happened Please. upon these plans uh, in, in the spoils of our adventuring. They uh, they came from someone who is less fortunate than us. Mm -hmm. Which is not innuendo for us killing them. They were eaten by a troll. Ugh. Horrible way to go, that is. Yeah. All right. Smell. So we have an understanding. You will uh, let me make a copy of the instructions, and I will sell you the materials you need for 500 gold. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. I feel like the blueprints are probably worth more than 50 gold, but go off. And also, if you have any metal on you that you want to sell, now could be a good time to offload that, just to... Yeah. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, question mark. I, mean, I don't know that, that I do. That is a question. Do any of you just have random metal on you? Um, hey, Earthmover, does anyone ever still have the treasure from the bear cave? I have no idea. Drew, I'm looking. Drew, I have metal on me. Yeah, but you can't sell an arm. Yeah. I would like to sell Wisbon. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, right. Uh, you can also sell evidence. Of what? Uh, you guys used the orc and orcish weapons as evidence that there were, in fact, orcs, but that was returned to you after the trial was over. Mm. And also, only a few of the guns were confiscated, so you probably still have some of those. Okay. I'm not does... seeing any metal in my inventory. Yeah, does Wespin have any metal he wants to sell? I don't think I would want to sell it. Does Rayford have any? Well, let, let me check. Because unless I... Oh, um... Actually... What what happened to the, um... Didn't, didn't we loot... Didn't, didn't we loot you... Didn't we loot a bunch of armor, um... Two sessions back? Yes, you did. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, you had a, got a bunch of armor and equipment if you want to sell them. Cool. I mean, the, the metalsmith probably doesn't necessarily want to buy swords and stuff, but... Yeah, not the swords, but, like, the armor, he, he could buy it for the raw materials from us. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Like, not not necessarily the um the swords, because those I could sell to a sword to um to a weaponsmith and probably get a better deal for a better deal from him. But at least like the armor, I could probably sell that to him, especially if it's metal armor. Yeah. I'm not saying I can get a better deal, but at least I get something. How much I I didn't write it down. How much armor was it, anyways, that I picked up? Okay, so hmm. we there are seven great axes, four broken sets of plate armor, three solid sets of plate armor. All, all, uh, the three sets of broken. You said? Yes. I'll, I'll put the three sets of broken. Hmm. How much for these for the raw? Component. Hmm. All right. So, well, some solid metal plates. Let's see now. Hmm. Well, let's see now. Well, Leather and straps aren't much good to me anymore, but still, this is plenty of solid uh, iron, so... Hmm. I mean, I can buy this for you for scrap, but you still might get better a better deal just selling it as armor if you know anyone, but to tell you how much... Hmm. Probably about 40 pounds of usable metal per suit. And hmm, I can give you three silver per pound, so. So that's going to come out to 36 gold. 36 gold? Yes. Just take a quick gander at how much. Well, do I know off the top of my head how much, how much a set of plate would sell for? Like a I full mean, set of like, plate, like a brand new, well-made full set of plate armor. You know, it could be well over a thousand gold pieces. But also, that's because of the you know intense skill work that it takes to craft that. That the raw metal of it is only a small portion of the cost. Yeah. And this guy, his interest in it is just for the you know raw metal. Especially because it's not like anyone that he would be building armor for would necessarily be orc size, but yeah, you might be able to sell it to the um, military for the um, Luxodon division. Okay, I'll 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 keep the um I'll, I'll keep it then for now. Okay. But also keep in mind it's sixty five pounds per set, so. You guys are just walking that around, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I got my fifty gold. If if we went to the places that you would normally get this metal from, could we buy it for you at a cheaper price and then just go to them and say that it, we're getting it on on your behalf? You give us a note saying that you authorized this. I mean. I, I have a contract with a mine. They sell me, you know, ore, and then I refine it. And then I have a contract with another smith, and he, um, you know, works it into 
you know, various things that people need metal for. I mean, if you wanted to, you could probably go to the mine and buy some, you know, metal ore, but. And I, I look over at, um, I look at Earth Mover. Do we need the metal to be refined already? Or can it just be raw ore? Earth Mover, you, you there, Andreas? I mean, also, you, you got 500 gold from selling one guy. There will be. I know, I know, but at the same time, it's like, if I can. If I can save some costs, I mean, it's like, it doesn't hurt. Let's try. I didn't find uh, anything. I don't have any of the weapons in my inventory, but I okay. do have yeah, 57 yeah. gold to contribute to the to the cause. Okay. Yeah. And when you add that to the 50 gold that your schematics already got, then that really means that you're paying 100 gold towards this. This is true. Yeah. All right. So, do we have a deal then? Very well. All right. And then I just, I, I just, I, I give him, I give him the notes, and I, I, I just pay for it all in full. Oh, okay. Very well. Pleasure doing business with you. Now, uh, do you want to collect the metal yourself, or shall I bring it up to you, or? Uh, if you just bring it out front. Okay. It also, I, I love that Earth Mover absolutely could do this himself, but he just likes to watch the little guy. I'm going to watch him wheel it out front and then turn it into something lighter and carry it away. Yep. Uh, he, he He's not really going to realize that it's lighter, though, right? He's just going to think that... Yeah, he's just going to think gonna, I'm that strong, actually. Yeah. yeah. So he, this guy, he just starts pretty like this, hard after you know full of, um, you know, uh, silver and lead laying it out. Is he working up a good sweat? Yeah. Good. But you can also tell that he's pretty strong. Yeah, but he is moving, like he said, ten times his body weight worth of metal. Yeah. Does, does, does he do this on a dolly? Does he, does he just casually just lift it up? How, how's he carrying this metal? He said he was carting it out. Yeah. Oh. You know, oh, oh, you know. I'm really earning the vacation that this money's going to pay for. Oh. <laughs> so after a while, he just has those giant things of metal in front of you. It says, oh, how are you going to get this home? Well, I was just going to make the item. And you then... know, you could have just gone back into the store and done that. Oops. Uh, Earth Mover sits down in the pile of metal. Okay, so this is important. Which planar gem are you guys dedicating to this? I mean, I I feel like what what which uh the the tower gem is the one that would that would best be utilized for this, right? Probably. I mean, what what planar gems do we have right now? Yeah, that was what I was about to ask. Is which ones we own? Uh, water, earth, um, Thanatos, arcane, and endless maze. The, the, end, the endless maze would allow us to. Endless like, maze is the one that lets us think about the endless maze go portal to portal hmm? to portal. That's. Hmm? I think we were going to use the arcane gem. Okay. The, the arcane. What what, the benef what, what benefits do the arcane gem versus the versus the endless maze gem provide us? The so, endless maze is the one that lets us turn yeah. portals into other portals. Um, yeah, you were able to do some portal hacking with that when, in conjunction with other planar gems. Yeah. And then the arcane gem, what would that allow us to do? Um, let's see. You know, that is the one that um, you've been using to cast um, instant tower from. And so. Uh, and also, which, yeah. which gem... Which gems were we using in conjunction with the endless maze to change change portal targets? Which I mean, it just seems in general that having other planar gems in your um, vicinity it, is what allowed it to happen. Yeah, it was more of a I need more power than a 
using the powers of them. It was more like just sapping. It's okay, like okay. linking up another electronic device, not because you need the capabilities of that electronic device, but because you need its battery. Yeah. Well, also, it was battery like, you need storage. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, it was also more of like a homing thing. Like you had like um an upper gem and some lower gem, so you're basically able to use that to link between. But usually, okay. we've been traveling usually inside the same plane, so that seems. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it was about like you know I need to get. Uh, this many interdimensional units away from this plane, and this many away from this plane, and this many away from this plane. Right. Uh, so wh whichever one we use, we will we still have access to this to that planar gem, or is it just going to be permanently within this within this um within this structure? Yeah. Are are the powers of whichever gem we use going to be accessible as that gem, or is it only going to serve as the fuel source for this item? Um, you don't know completely. Um, you do know that depending on what kind of power source you do will affect uh, the contents of the box, but you get the feeling that it probably will be able to still use it for some other things, like... Sure. Um, is the arcane also, gem the one for the, the, um... Do we know which plane that is for? That's for the um for the astral plane. Okay, perfect. Then that's the one we should use anyway, because it has the strongest connection to how mm -hmm. those storage devices work anyway. Yeah. Okay. If if it's gonna let us do anything, the thing mm -hmm. using it for something it is well attuned to already seems the most reasonable approach. Yeah. It was also kind of the unclaimed one. I mean, Gordon was yeah. using it for now because no one else wanted it, but it was just I mean, you all probably wanted it, he just got dibs. Right. Yeah. That that was yeah, it was unclaimed. Yeah. All right. So, you know, Earth Mover using his alchemical abilities and probably with his two assistants, he's able to very carefully make this into a near perfect box. Yeah. Would would, would this be made easier with uh, the other gems at least out? Not necessarily acting as a power source, but just helping to just amplify the general power of it. The gemminess. <laughs> exactly, the gemminess. Mm. Also, I mean, what does the guy think of this? Uh, I mean, he's seen some interesting things in his long life, but watching a guy just put his hands together and a bunch of metal folds into a box has got to rank among the top five. Just, just the top five? Damn, we, we've got to try harder. What hey, the? man. Don't underestimate the 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 beauty of of whale song you know he was born he heard his mother speak to him is that the name of your power are you a bard uh, no i this is an over the table joke about his mom being a whale oh. we're trying to find his son yeah okay anyway box made Gem, take gem, gem put inside. Yep. Yeah, and you know, um, following the directions of the um, you know instruction manual, you're able to find the right place to attach it, and the thing begins to glow, and then um, you know this solid metal box begins to become covered in various forms of runes and lines, and eventually, um, a lid appears at the top that looks like you could open it. Blink. Okay, so by opening up, um, the thing is that it, well, for one thing, it's lit on the inside with like this um, faint purple glow. And, but as a reminder, we're talking 30 feet by 30 feet by 30 feet. So Earth Mover probably doesn't want to just jump in. Did, but he does wait, there's did, a ladder it, on the it, side. It, okay, there's a ladder on the side. I was going to check. Is, is it a ladder to get in or like, yeah. or, or, or are we walking in through a doorway? Ding, are ding, we dropping ding, in from the top, ding, or are we ding, coming in through a doorway? Uh, you are going in from the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I put it on the ground and climbed down the ladder. All right. <laughs> yep. So you know it's nice in there. Uh, airy. It doesn't feel too um, stale. Um, you don't know if the air self circulates though. Time to start filling the box. The box with boxes. Yeah, yep. just don't Wait. put any storage devices in the storage device. Can 
Uh, there actually is a note in there that it's that uh, based off of their calculations, it should be safe to bring a bag of holding inside. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. I, I was actually about to. Uh, okay. So we have this box. Mm-hmm. We, we have this magic box, mm-hmm. which ha- which can make a room 30 by 30. How much yes. space does the box does the box on the outside take up? Uh, three feet by three feet. Okay. Can we put another box, just like the one that we made, inside of this box? So how uh, how far can we a... nest these boxes? So it would either have to be that you make this new box on the inside, or it would have to be smaller. Because remember, the uh, the entrance is still only three feet by three feet. So, yeah, but yes, well, okay. well, how tall is it? Silver and lead. How tall is it? The entrance. Yeah. Well, yeah, the physical box on the outside. I mean, it's, it's three. It's three foot. Three foot cubed, right? Yes. Three by three by three? Okay. So it's a three by three cube or three by three by three. If it was like three by three by one or something, then uh, there, 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 there is a height at which you could just drop one through the other, is my point. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. If, if, it, if it's three foot cubed, but yes, you could start dumping in more silver and lead if you had more planar gems. I, I want you guys to know that now that we're saying this out loud, I'm totally designing a dungeon based on this premise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really expensive dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now, now that we know that, uh, this is going to be fun. Also, taking into account like how prices and things of magic items work, mm-hmm. Uh, hang on. Four hundred five point one to five. Never mind. That might be wrong. Don't listen to me. Continue. Okay, but were you so, about to figure out how much this should cost? It, it, this is technically an uncommon item based off of the material needs. Something like that. Technically, it's a common item based on the time it took to create it. But we had a blueprint, so uh, question mark. Well, also, I mean, I, I I feel like this should be more like a rare alchemy item is based a little bit stronger how, than how normal creating things. Well, no, I was also going to point out that the that the most important aspect here is the planar gem. Yeah. Yeah, without the planar gem, this would be really hard to fuel. So this is basically a god-level artifact as far as that scaling goes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I forgot that we, like, literally used an artifact to make this. So it is, in fact, an artifact itself. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to look at the guy and go, hey, how does it feel to watch a legendary to artifact grade uh, magic item spawn into existence in front of you? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you... No. <laughs> Did you just ask, you half, half inside the box? Please tell me you're like half in the box and you say that. <laughs> well, no, I, I poked my head back out to ask that. Yeah. Good. Oh, so specifically, yes, are you a god? Not not big god. Not big G god. Yeah. Uh, you... No, I'm just... A pa- the, you know what? People you, just you get powerful that enough you... that the distinction starts to blur, but no. What is your name? We... I... Earth Mover. Shantai Mighty Earth Mover. Earth Mover. What? Mighty Earth Mover. Oh, he's, he's bowing to you. The visitation he's, of he's, powerful he's, start, god. he's treating you as a god. I, I'm not... <sighs> I'm not the Messiah. That's exactly what the Messiah is. I, 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 I rushed over and I, I put my mouth over Earth Mover. I put my hand over Earth Mover's mouth to, just to shut him up. And okay. who are you? I am the nameless one. Oh, Earth Mover and the nameless one. I shall remember this the day I was visited by the one that moves Earth and the nameless one. Earth Mover is <laughs> crawling back into the hole. Yes. And on this site where the sacred box was made. Now, I'll come up with a better name for it. Don't worry. What about the Ark? A portable basement. The Ark has a good name. That's a good yes. name to it. The Ark of Earth Mover. No, it's a portable basement. The portable basement of Earth Mover. It's no. I didn't design it. And, and, where we're going to be going now. And okay. in, in the future, we No, we, 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 we copy the blueprints. Come, we may grace you with our presence in the future. 
Okay. He still he still needs to copy the blueprints. Our services have not yet been paid. Mm -hmm. it's Yes, and uh, you see him very, very carefully, um, you know, sketch everything down to the last detail. Like, he actually, just to be safe, like, um, you see him start over a few times, a few different pieces of paper, because, like, um, you know, as far as he's concerned, like, the diagrams on here are, and everything like that, like, it, it needs to be exactly picture perfect to what you just did, so. He, he, he's treating this as a holy artifact. Yes. Yeah, he's, yes. like, recopying coffee smears. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's just like, yes. that might be important. The sacred texts. All right. Well, unless you're doing business with you. Yeah. Oh, so we're vacation. Thank you. And Chris, how does uh, Westman react to all this? Sorry, I just came back from the bathroom. What? Okay. So uh, they finally made the portable basement. Wait. And we're, uh, and, uh, we're, we're being treated as, as the mis or. Earth Movers is being treated as a messiah. Wait, hold I'm on. I'm trying desperately to tell him that I am not, in fact, a god. He is not listening. And I'm, I'm just leaning all into it. Oh, boy. Um, Drew, yeah. this is going to be the third one. Yes. <laughs> really trying to not have that happen. Hey, if, if multiple places are treating you as a god, that means you get cheaper resources. Yeah. It makes things easier because now you can summon an army hey, to fight well, by your side. I just wanted to learn about rocks. <laughs> and you became a god of rocks. How does it make you feel? Bad. <laughs> Disingenuine. Andreas, congratulations. You have the character arc of an anime protagonist or a JRPG <laughs> um, protagonist. It's just like, I just came here to find out about the power of pennies and now I'm god. Yep. I came here to fight God or die trying. And I'm all out of trying. I don't think that's what I'm going to say. No, I, like, you, you came here to fight God or to just make things, and in the process, you became God. I came here to kick bubblegum and chew ass, and I'm all out of ass. Mm -hmm. Sir? Pause? <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah chris how does westman react to all this it's uh interesting i don't know i can't process it yeah uh, how does we're, oh, yeah. We're, does we're, west, we're, does once he's done copying we're just gonna walk out today thank you yeah thank like you very much yeah like how does it affect westman's processors that there's a box in front of him that's larger on the inside did we just reinvent the TARDIS? No. I We're prefer to call it non-Euclidean. Huh? That's not accurate either. Okay, fine. It's Aristotelian. The word you want is Aristotelian and still doesn't make any sense. Shakespearean? It makes more sense. You're, you're going even further away. Aripostolian. No. Aristotelian? Oh, there you go. Yeah, are these virtue ethics? No. Yeah. All it's right. It's just so... a box. It's just a very fancy, very expensive, very large mm -hmm. bag of holding. Nice. Mm. All right. So... All right. So, is there anything else you guys want to do in town? Um, I mean, now that we've become God, mm -hmm. no, actually, um, in town, no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm pretty much ready to just uh, keep on trekking. All right. So, shall we fast forward to when you guys head off? Sure. I, actually, before we do, are there any? Are there any places where I can purchase scrolls in town? Uh, yes, there probably is a... Well, there's a magical bookstore, but it's pretty limited. But from what you're able to gather, there's also one up in Cloudforge. But... I, I, I still want to check out this... Uh, check, check the store out, see if there's any ritual spells that I want. 
Okay, so which rituals are you looking for? Uh, I don't even know what rituals I, what rituals there are. Like that, I haven't been able to easily find um, a place that tells me. Uh, is, it, is there some place that I can check to see what spells have rituals? Yes. Cool. So, let's see now. Oh yeah, I, I I found it. I found it. Okay. Um. Are, are there any which could be used for for battle purposes? I guess. Mm, not really. Let's see now. Uh, your favorite spells or ritual? Um, unseen servant is. Yeah, I I I, I see the pure pack food and drink. I already have that as a as a as um. A spell. There's Skyrite. Oh, Phantom Steed. Tiny Hut. Contact other plane. Yeah, most of these are, um, you know, about either making things or learning things. Oh, uh, a tensor floating disc. But Earth Mover can already cast that. But that's through his uh, magic hammer, so you can't put they scribe it. All right. I can tell you the entire list of spells that I can prepare. That doesn't mean I have them prepared right now, but these are the ones that I can. All right. Let, uh, let me, well, let me that, that would be helpful, right? Because you need ritual spells. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, alarm, detect magic, identify, magic mouth, purify food and drink, sky right, water breathing, water walk. I was actually just, I actually just saw something. I just want to double check if I can copy it down. We're going to add other rituals to it. I am HO, detect okay. magic, identify magic mouth are really the best ones there. Half my warlock level. Perfect. So what I'm hearing is I can, since I'm a 10th level warlock, what I'm hearing is I can I can write down a spell which is above my current ability normally, but if I use my book, I can cast it. Yes. Am I correct in that assumption? Uh, I think so, but only as a ritual. Uh, only as a ritual, yes. Yeah. So I can look at fifth level spells. Hmm. What is this one? I think I know what I want to do, but I just want to double check. Oh, wait, 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 wait. When you find such a spell, you can add to your book if the spell's level is equal to or lesser than half your warlock level rounded up. Yep, so, and yeah, my warlock level, level is level 10. So. Yes, go up to level 5. Yes, you're right. I take it back. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, you I could have the powerful level level ritual of Rary's te Telepathic Bond. Which actually could fit your theme because that lets you form a telepathic bond with people. I, I was actually just wondering. Um, hmm. Would the would the hat count as a deity or divine proxy? Uh, for what purposes? For commune. Um. Because I'm wondering if I can get straighter answers from it by using commune. Yes, yes. I would say yes. If you were to have the commune spell, then you could cast that on the hat to get answers. Or and you could I also with yeah, a sanity check. Um, so if I can get it on sanity check, sanity check by doing that, I'm absolutely going to. Because right now, that is my biggest holdup. Is it requires me to roll, essentially, a sixteen. Okay, I'm gonna say yes, but because but also because the spell has some serious restrictions. Because like you can only really get yes or no answers from it. 
So okay. you can so you don't have to worry about sanity, but that's because you're tapping into a much more narrow field, which could be how you look at it though. It's like um, you know, in order to um, avoid sensory overload, you are narrowing down what you actually have access to. Or I could yeah. also contact my patron with commune. Yes, you could also contact uh, Ryford. Perfect. Uh, and normally I can't do that as easily. No, that's correct. Perfect. I'm uh, Do any of can I purchase commune from from a uh, from this store? Um. Okay, I'm gonna say no, and not just because I'm trying to get us to the next thing, but also it's it's a fifth level spell, so like a regular magic bookstore wouldn't per se have it, but okay. Uh, a divination. Yes, it's Same a deal? divination based spell. Yeah, I know, but like di divination is another is another ritual spell I can get. Is it also fifth level? It's fourth level. For each level of the spell. Okay. Yes, but remember, it costs four hours to transcribe. Uh, sorry, eight hours and 200 gold pieces to transcribe. What, what do you mean? Yeah, this, this is also the reason why Andres have had multiple conversations about why wizard's actually not that good of a class. It's subjective to the worst class by a wide hours, version. Hours, and, gee, that's a lot of rare ink I would need. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. I've got some good stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you also does, does he does he have div, uh, divination to purchase? I'm gonna say yes, he does have divination. Ooh, okay. Uh, how much is divination? Uh, let's see now. Thank you. Remember, so let's roll here. We go. So let's see now. This would be a rare magic item. So just to purchase it would be. 500 gold pieces. Wow. Okay. Uh, and water walk, same deal, or would that be cheaper? Because if, if we're already, if we're starting to become godlike beings, might as well just fully embrace it. I mean, Gordon can help you with walking on the water, but anyway, so. Oh, he, he can help me with that? Sure. Yeah, it, it's something his staff can do. Yeah, but it's like, then we have multiple ways of doing it. But yeah, anyway. Okay, actually, okay, actually yeah. anyway, is this something that you're interested in your character doing as a wider concept? Nah, I'm just curious. I mean, anyway, just... no, uh, but um, I, I, I'd say the one I'm most interested in is Commune, but big, bigger okay. city, yeah, we, we, can, we can go to a bigger city. Yeah, because if you want, I can find ways to, you know, add in this as a wider, it, it just wasn't something I was prepared for, but if you want, I can put more information in it. Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we, can, we, we, we can worry about that outside the session, just uh, DM and figure it out. Okay, uh, Chris, anything else you want to do in town? Not particularly. All right, so do you guys wait for the next day? Yeah, very much. All right, so you have a coordinated meeting spot with, um, you know, the, uh, the, the doctors. And, um, you know, they are very excited to be reunited. And um, Dr. Adriano, she says, ah, yes, I've been looking forward to fly again. Yes, had um, you failed in your mission, I probably would have just flown off into the sunset. Don't know if I ever would have landed either. Well, you would have landed eventually. Hmm, I suppose. But So they bring you into a large enclosed metal carriage. Um, Earth mover, you might want to watch your head. Uh, you too, Westbun. Actually, just everyone watch out for all of their body parts. How 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 cramped is this? I mean, there's like five adventurers plus the two doctors, so it's it's pretty cramped. Ah, so I feel at home then. Good, 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 good. Yep. Although yep. I am going up and into into the sky. Mm -hmm. Like I know this, but it's like I don't I don't realize how bad it's going to be until I'm going to be up there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be struggling up there. It's gonna be bad. Mm -hmm. All right, and off we go. 
And uh, but before they do, they actually gesture to some ropes near each of your seats. All right, you're gonna need to tie yourselves in. Why? Why would we tie ourselves in? In case we hit, um, you know, turbulence along the way. It's also I, in case I, we have a rough landing. Out, out of out of character, turbulence. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're we're flying. How high are we flying? Doesn't matter. Yes, it does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And also, in case any birds start pecking at the side of the uh, plane, and in case any air gods get mad at one of you specifically and starts attacking you. In such an event, we are qualified to throw up to one of you overboard at a time. Up to one of you. <laughs> Lovely. What if you can were... throw over half a... So what I'm hearing is they can throw over half a person. They could throw so, over... So if well, two people were angry... If an angry god was mad at two people, then they're screwed. Well, no, no. It's one at a time. So they throw the first person, see if that appeases the angry air god, and then throw off another. What I'm hearing is they could throw is they could throw off two of us if we equal less than one person. Yeah. But but they can't throw off Earth Mover because Earth Mover Earth Mover is physically larger than one person. Hmm. So Earth, Earth Mover is they, they're stuck if the problems of Earth Mover. Got it. Oh, um, also speaking of stuck, what equipment are you guys bringing with you? We'll watch over your donkey carriage at their house, but. I mean, we, we can put everything that we want, would want to take into this um, into the box, right? Okay, so you're bringing the box with you? I mean, why wouldn't we? Yeah, that's fine if you are, but what are you going to put in it? Everything. All right. Yeah, you just throw all your equipment in there. Oh, wait, do you bring the dog these... in it? <laughs> uh, actually, we could put the donkey in there. Do we want to put the donkey in? We should get motorcycles. Oh, wait, no, how would they fit out, though? We should make a box that's bigger, with a bigger opening, so we can fit, we can fit bigger things in there. If you want to pay for inside. another box, you knock yourself out. Yeah, yeah, you know, the portable storage unit, the portable a hangar. The portable you know, warehouse, yeah. yeah portable hangar, you know. I mean, the, the, prob the problem that we're running into is the size of the box. If the box was... Larger than three feet, we could fit bigger things inside. Is this what Rayford's thinking? Been thinking about all night. Okay, now that we have this box, we need another larger box to put it in. Ex no, like th this is just me thinking. Why don't we just make the, the problem a right, hole like, we, of an arbitrarily large diameter? I feel like that'd be a lot easier. The the, the donk the donkey's too big to fit inside. Unless we start chopping the donkey up, then that defeats the purpose purpose of having the donkey. So what we need are, are bones. We can have we can have skeleton donkey, and Question. take that with us. Question: Yes, if you say sovereign glued, uh, two portable holes, edge to edge. What then? I, I feel like you would have two separate but connected portable holes hmm. i mean can you cut into a portable hole and then get a smaller portable hole uh i think not but i don't know are you gonna line the inside of the uh, basement with portable holes Maybe. The Maybe. thought that I'm having here is, could I just make a portable hole that has a wider and wider diameter by stitching new ones to the outside of it? Maybe. Because, mm -hmm. like, a portable 10 feet in diameter, if I'm not mistaken, what if I wanted one that was, like, the size of a large ground tarp? Well, so here's the thing. By raw, it's 6 feet in diameter, and what? I was doing some projections about covering the uh, inside of the portable hole. That's so with, small. Yeah, of the, inside the uh, portable basement with portable holes. And it was six feet in diameter, so that was really messing with all my projections. So in this world, they are five feet in diameter, but slightly deeper. Sure. 
Yeah. Uh, so yes, you could um, you know just put six portable holes along the um, floor, and then it probably also occurs to Earth Mover that he can like build other you know floors within this. Like he Ooh. could have a ten foot clearing and have three stories. What we really want, actually, mm -hmm. is um, what's the word I want? What's the word I want? I'm looking for a word. Uh, no, um, wondrous pigment. Yes, that's also another consideration. Because a hole doesn't cost anything. So you can just push out the barrier of any kind of portable anything like that and just make one that's arbitrarily large on the inside with not that much effort. Because, hmm. you know, the inside confines are determined by how much space you're taking up in the astral plane. But if what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, I'm going to make a little indent in my space that just pushes out its volume a little bit, you know, its, it's material worth is nothing. It's just air. Yeah. Well, or maybe the additional, you know, value of the uh, of the material that comprises its uh, the shell, right? So maybe the increase in surface area is worth considering. Mm -hmm. if, quick question for the DM: Is there a spell I can cast which will allow me to reanimate a reanimate a skeleton? Yes, it's called animate dead. It's called animate. Why can I not find? Do I not have access to that as a warlock? Uh, it should be on your Thanatos gem. Other than with my Thanatos gem, because that's limited on day to day. I mean, I just want to have more ways of animating the dead. You imagine? Oh, although, was... animate, never mind. Animate dead's an actual spell. Never mind. I'm good. Yeah. I don't think it's a ritual, though. Yeah, but anyway, do you guys, um, you know, tie yourself in as the safety demonstration recommended? Uh, I, I tie myself in doubly, triply well. Okay. So. Yes, the um, so the machine starts moving up at a moderate pace, and Adriana says, "We're going slow today, but it's not that far. Enjoy the view." And through the window windows, you can see the village begin to shriek beneath you. And after about twenty minutes, you feel yourself land on the floating city. And as they lead you out and help you untie, you see that you are about a hundred feet away from the edge, and you can also see nearby that there's uh, you know, this. Is a designated landing spot for aircrafts. Like there's a um, some hot air balloons and what looks like a uh, flying carpet. Welcome to Cloud Forge. You might be the first outsiders to ever visit the city. Well, aside uh, from the oh, engineers okay. who helped us make it, but. Hmm. So we're, we're, we're in this city. Are we able to see through the clouds? Actually, it, is this actually just a giant cloud that we're floating on? Or are there, is it, how's this being, how's this being uh, held aloft? Hmm. Well, that's a good question, uh, Rayford. So this entire city is powered by some very powerful elaborate forges created by a team of international engineers. This, this isn't going to fall to the ground anytime oh, soon. Oh, no, no. You know, not unless you break it. E excuse me? Is it easy to break? Oh, no, of course not. Okay, good. I'm just a little nervous up here. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is rather high up, isn't it? Oh, I mean, it's not that high up, and she consults her notes. You know, unless that, that ship was flying very slowly, mm -hmm. we did fly quite high. Yep. We were in there for a while, about... Mm -hmm. 20 minutes? Yeah. How, how high are we? Mm -hmm. Um...
I am checking my notes. So... Does, does anybody remember the entire purpose we had for fly for flying up here? They have a planar gem, we think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So yeah, and uh, as you can it for a moment, it says so oh, not that high up, only about two thousand feet. Oh. So, oh, yeah, but elves are impervious to fall damage, right? Yeah, sh sure. Sure we are. In that case, uh, you might want to sign up for one of the experiments. I'm sure that there, there are all kinds of scientific experiments going on. I'm sure that there's at least one of them that wants to test the effects of throwing people off the edge. Oh, and I'm, 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 sure I'm sure there are other elves that would be more than willing to, to, to do that for you. Well, you're the only elf for hundreds of miles. I mean, it's not like there are many other elves in this area. I mean, you're the only one I've met for a very long time. And, you know, it's kind of a kind of interesting, though. You know, the, those high elves, they brag about being made out of the stars. But now you're higher up than any of them will ever be. It's not like there was any ever. And also, farther than any of them could be. It's not like there were any high elves living in the area. Where? Where are the high elves living nowadays, anyways? Hmm. And she takes a moment and she points um, eastward. Okay. Pointing yeah. e eastward. Okay. Yeah, pretty far eastward. You'd have to take a boat to get there. All right. Well, welcome to Cloud Forge. So, Earthmover, what do you think? Yep. Did you know that this whole city is one mile in diameter? Which, for a city, is, you know, kind of small, but I think it's pretty impressive as a uh, superstructure. Actually, how, how tall is the city? Like, is, is it, like, are we talking multi, like, 10 plus story buildings, or are they, like, just a couple stories tall? Uh, the buildings you see around you. The buildings you see around you just appear to be a few stories tall, but you see that towards the center of the city there are some taller ones. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Good and let's see now. So, mile across got a radius of half a mile. It's a hemisphere, of course, but yep. And is this? Can the city go higher? I can mean, it go lower? Yes, it could, of course, go lower. I mean, it had to get off the ground somehow, but but yes. Um, but when we first designed it. It was to a maximum altitude of 5,000 feet. And do you often touch down on the ground, or do oh, you just stay in the air forever? The city hasn't touched down uh, since it was originally launched. Oh, okay. Rayford is fine. Everything is fine. Okay, yeah. Um anything? Yeah, cool. All right. So we're going after the planar gem, so where are we going from here? So uh, where 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 are we going next? Andreas, mm. do you know, uh, and uh, Chris, do you guys know where you're heading next? Up. Does any, does my memory core buzz with anything? 
Um, yeah, so being in this, uh, so Westman is certain that he's never been in this particular city before, but it also has, uh, but at the same time, it kind of has an air of familiarity to him. Like he had probably heard about the concept before he left. Okay. And, um, you know, it's explained to you that, um, you know, the city, it's um, a mile across, goes ha down a half mile, and underneath it, there's, um, you know, a series of complex tunnels that lead down to um, sewage treatment, but also the power and everything like that. Yep. Um, yeah, it's quite amazing down there. You know, if you get the chance and the security clearance, you should check it out while you're here. Hmm. Yep. Yep, a lot um, of power sources. We can't really. I can't. I'm, I'm only qualified to tell you so much. But seeing as you did save my husband's life, I'll let you know that um, you know, a there is a major power source of the city. Question. Yes. Um, can if I show him my shoulder, can I ask him if he has any insight on it? You know where it says Westbone. Yes, and um, you know the man you rescued. He's still uh. You know, he's still pretty shocked by everything that's going on, so he's not talking much. But if you show it to him, he begins to consider it for a moment. He says, yes, yes. I think I remember hearing some stories. Um, Yes. From, it was before my time, but from my understanding, one of the, hmm. yes, I know that there was some work on this with you know, the army going back a while. Um, I believe that the name of one of the men that worked on it was Jeffrey, but I couldn't tell you much more than that. And when he says Jeffrey, you actually are given a flashback. And it's basically of you being on a lab, uh, you know, being worked on and tinkered with, and you realize um, where the West comes from on West Bend. You're still not sure what the Ben refers to, but you actually remember it's not West Bend, it's West Ben. But it also wasn't West either, that just became your call sign. But specifically, you were subject W-354. And but the people who worked with you, they basically leaded that into West. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And you were sure. one of the um, first few functioning uh, models. Yes, and you uh, remember, you know, being referred to as, um, you know, subject 354. Um, you know, um, you know, pick up this can and carry it across the room. Um, subject three, uh, W-354, um, you know, break down this um, uh, dummy that we've put in front of you. Uh, 3-54, execute this um, you know, prisoner. And that, that probably doesn't sit well with me at all, right? Yeah, so just like a series of, um, yeah, you realize that there's um, a lot of these memories in here that you could tap into about, um, just all forms of diagnostic tests and um, stress testing and seeing how well you worked. All right. So you guys have a city to explore. It is getting a bit late, but will we be able to have a session next week? I don't know. Well, I, I'm not going to be there for it. Yeah. But Andres, one more thing. Hmm. You hear the voice of Maria Turin pop into your head. And you hear her say, Earth Mover met Lithmoriana Goliath named Elk Knight, wants to meet you. 
he going to Panip, impressed but suspicious of you. Okay. So when that happens, does that uh, trigger anything in Earthmover? Does he know who Alkanite is? I have that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of a unique decision. And you can respond to her if you want, up to 25 words. Where? Is that all you say? Yeah. Um, I mean, it would require... Okay, so you've interacted with this spell enough to know that it would require another whole casting of the spell in order for her to respond to that end. Yes. But that is also the only piece of information that's relevant. Uh, you know that he is going to Penny. Oh, she's... Okay. Um, yeah. So he is trying to, uh, you know, track you down. Well, I'd be surprised if he can get up here, considering how much hassle it was for us. Yeah. Well, I mean, Caribou can fly, right? No. So. Yeah, it, wait, do you mean Caribou Crusader? No. But all right then. Um, is there anything else you guys want to do in uh, game? No. Oh. All right. I think this is an interesting place for us to leave off. You uh, finally have the portable basement. That's a big one. Um, Rayford sold a guy. I, I mean, is it really selling a guy if I don't think that he's really a person? That just makes you uh, both evil and racist. Yeah, uh, Ash, that, that's worse. You do get how that's worse, right? I mean... Man, the Druid Council loves my progress. I mean, it's still um, elven trafficking either way. Congratulations, you're I mean, working in the flush trade now. I mean, is this a bad thing if I hate high elves? I mean, I'd like to point out that, like... Having course, racial prejudice doesn't justify your actions that are... Like, yeah, wait a second. Yeah, first of all, time out. No. Any high I, elves I, I think you're good to end the episode there. No, no, but also, uh, now I'm also beginning to wonder something. So, otherwise, you guys probably would have just killed this elf anyway. So, is what um, um, Rayford did even all that worse? But, oh, I yeah. see myself as the good guy here. But, Chris, is there anything else you want to do before we end the session? Not at the current moment. I'm still, My character would still mull on what his thoughts are. All right. Memory. But in that case, I guess that's going to be... I guess that's a good place to call the session. Um, Till next time, I've been your host and Dungeon Master, Drew, being joined by... Earth Mover. And... Rayford and it's my fun. Till next time. W Bye. before. <laughs>